Good morning. Welcome to Schofield Bible Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike Mackey. And to, we are continuing our study in the book of Ephesians. And it's uh, such a wonderful explanation of the Christian walk with all its barriers and difficulties kind of pointed out. So uh, we have continued to extend our ministry in the book of Ephesians here. Uh, and we're focusing on the particular ministry of the Holy Spirit called filling. And so we're working our way to that verse in the fifth chapter. Uh, why don't we just begin with a word of prayer because I know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna start teaching on this. <laughs> Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity for us to be together. Uh, the body of Christ has been to fellowship. And we thank you, Father, that our fellowship is focused upon our fellowship with you. That without that fellowship going on between ourselves and yourself, Father, and the, the Son and the Holy Spirit, we are incapable of having a, the level of fellowship that you desire of us to have one toward another. Help us, Father, to understand that and help us how we to really truly grasp how we can have this happen in our life and finding out what is acceptable in your sight. Uh, undertake for our study, draw us to yourself in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you look on the back and, um, of your bulletin, okay, and it has, it says verses, Psalm 5, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, imperative mood. That's, okay, we're going to get really kind of, I've, I've talked to you about, uh, the emphasis in the Greek language that we don't see is uh, the constant motivation. So this is Ephesians chapter five, verses one through 10. And that's what we will be studying today. But I wanna to tie together the things we have been studying in recent messages. And I thought, let's just go through these verses I have it here up in the screen. Well, that doesn't look like it. Uh, let's see. Try it again. There we go. So this is what you can look at in, in your notes this morning. And just follow along with me here and I'll, I'll try to explain it. How many know here what the word, word uh, imperative means? Pardon? Necessary. I'm hard of hearing, I'm sorry. What, what did you say? Or command. Command. Necessary. Necessary, imperative, it's must be done. So if you put the word must there, helps you out. This is something you must do. So what's, he, what's the subject he's talking about? He's carried over from the previous, we see the word therefore. So he's pointing backwards to this presentation that started in the beginning of the fourth chapter. We're not going to go there. We did that last week. But this week, I'm just focusing on this chapter here. In the light of what we've learned in chapter four, and I'm assuming you know what that is, therefore, be imitators. So the reason why you should do this is explained in chapter four. So I encourage you, please, as we're studying the book of Ephesians, 
read the book of Ephesians and you'll catch the flavor of what God's trying to do in our hearts. The, ch the church at Ephesus had its problems, just like every church has its problems. And he tailored this to the particular problems that the church at Ephesus were having. And so there's things that he doesn't explain in detail. He just, uh, in, just indicates, assuming that they know certain things, and we'll have a verse like that here in our introduction, a verse that points out that, they were, that he reminds them that they know these things. So I now know you know them. And, I, and so, if, and you, you continue to know them and they have benefits. So let's go through this portion. Therefore be, and the word be is the present tense. And you could use the word now to explain it. N-O-W, now. What's going on now? So that's a, that word has a continuing, well, now is now. Okay, it's a second ago was now previously, but now this now is now, and then now. And, then. and so it speaks of continuation. Therefore, be present imperative passage. No. Uh, what's really strange about the way this is or, ordered, this is kind of a strange thing because the passive voice is saying that someone else is doing it. What? You're telling me to, you're giving me an instruction to have someone else do it. Yes, that's exactly what I want you to do. The Spirit of God is saying through the Apostle Paul, therefore be imitators. See, you don't have the natural ability to be an imitator of God. Do you? Can you be as good as God is doing? No. So what is the word of God saying? There is a method or a means by which we can be imitators of God. Therefore, be present imperative passive. Present now imperative. You must passive Allow God to enable you. See? See how that works? Imitators of God as dear children. So we have a bunch of, you must, you must, you must, you must, you must, you must. And you don't see that necessarily in the English, but it is so punctual. It is so important in the original languages. And I want you to be just, just savor that and let that just that idea soak into your thinking. Therefore, be. Are we out of, of notes? See, that's what I did. I just said, Lord, I'm just, I'm just going to make 20 copies. We haven't had enough people out. So, boom. So, you, you, so Lord says, okay, no, uh, sorry, Mike, you were wrong again. Here we go. Imitators of God as dear children. God is love. Oh, I, there's a, a portion in First John, you can read that on your own. And this is, when we imitate God, we're imitating a being that is capable, is constant in the, this particular characteristic of loving. His supernatural ability to, ability to love. And God says, I want you to trade in your kind of love for God's kind of love. So that's what a passive voice is saying. You, you were to let, help, let God help you imitate him. 
because you're incapable of doing that in your own energy. That's what the law pointed out. God said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. However, how did Israel do? They failed, they failed, they failed, they failed, they failed to bring another animal sacrifice, another animal sacrifice, another for their sin, because they were incapable of that level of performance. What is unique for this dispensation of the grace of God that the apostle talked about in the third chapter of this book of Ephesians is that we have in uh, different household rules. The word dispensation means household rules. God wants us to operate different than it, it's, it is done in the Old Testament. It doesn't mean we don't have commands. Oh, look, look at be this, be this, be this, be this. But how we are able to perform it is different. God is wants to enable us. And we've gone over that, how you trigger that enablement, reckoning that you died together with Christ, you were buried together with Christ, you're resurrected to Christ in position. As God looks at you, it looks like you died. You know, the, the day you got saved, the day when you believed the gospel that Christ died on the cross for your sins was buried and rose again, you died with Christ. In the mind of God, you died with Christ. You were buried together with Christ. You were resurrected. And it has a purpose for you to think this way because as the book of Romans chapter 6 points out, that we're, we're to present our body as a living uh, uh, how can I put this thing? Manifestation of our body parts in doing his will every day. Not, not per, uh, perfect from human standard, but perfect because of our dependency upon God. And he counts it together for perfect righteousness because we did it by faith in his promises to us. It's a supernatural arrangement that we can be counted as done doing something perfect when obviously in our human ability, we did not. But we, we trusted him and he, we, we, he allowed him to cause us to be imitators of God as dear children, as he said, the similarity is to uh, the parent-child relationship where the, there is a love of, between the father and the son or daughter or mother, da uh, no matter which parent you're talking about, but it's talking about that, that kind of love, communication, connection. So be imitators. Verse two, and walk, again, it's a present imperative, but it's different voice. Active means you did it. The person who is doing the action is the one that's doing it. And so we, we are responsible to get up in the morning. I hope, you, I hope you didn't get hurt. <laughs> we are responsible to get up in the morning. God's not going to get in us and, you know, no, no, we, there's a cooperation that goes on between us as humans and the God of the universe. And walk in love. Yes, we are choosing to, to allow God's enablement. It's our choice this time. So we know the principle, and we're applying it in our... See, it's one thing to know something. It's quite another to do something. When you know, and then you do. Wow. That's what God's impressed with. 
And, and as God looks at it, this is what it looks like. It looks like the Lord Jesus Christ in operation. Because you died together with Christ, you're buried together with Christ, you're resurrected together with Christ. He's, you are allowing yourself to be Christ-like in God's eyes because you're walking by faith. Just relaxing in him, enjoying being his child, loving him, and loving him, those that God loves. As Christ, just as Christ did it, also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. I find this very interesting, and I just throw this in because it's on, on the other side of your notes. I've, imp I've provided you, I, I provided you the uh, a verse on the on the left hand column. If you turn the notes over, it's. The second portion, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And he talks about a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. And so he's talking about the same subject there in Romans chapter 12, but from a different perspective. It's claiming your priesthood. Here, it's claiming your ability to imitate God. So every... That's why we need to know the word of God so we know what verses to believe for different situations and to trust him for. So the spirit is providing this ability to love with the love of God. And it's very pleasing to God. It's sweet smelling aroma. So be imitators. Number two, walk in love. <clears throat> Score on the third command. Number three, but fornicators and unclean or covetous, let it not even be named. So the idea is don't let it even be there a, a uh, Accusation, I guess that's the word I put there. That no one would even accuse you of such a thing. Your behavior is so fitting to your position. You're truly trying to line up in being set apart to God. Uh, if, if, and we recognize that principle of holiness, being set apart to God, in uh, our study in the fourth chapter. Do not be named. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting. They just don't fit. What you are doing in verses one and two, these things don't fit it with verses one and two. So by again, the passive voice uh, that tells you who's, who, uh, these, that other people are judging you. So you, you want to be a testimony before other people. You want to love other people. You don't want to stumble other people by your activities. Number five, for this you know perfectly. Oh, that means a past completed action with present results. Wow. Wow. You know this already. You've studied this. You've, 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 you, you, I know you know this. I know your teacher at the church at Ephesus, and I know you. he's covered this. And so this is something you have under your belt, and so you have no excuse. So you must, in the light of what you know, choose to understand this thing and hold it in your frontal lobe and hold on to it, to do something. What do you know? That no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an adulterer has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God.
I have to cor I'm, I'm sorry, I'm correcting my notes here a little bit. I'll, I'll have to fix it up later. You know the principle of inheritance. He doesn't explain it here. They know it. So he doesn't take time to explain it. Let's go over to open our Bibles for a moment now. And go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. So when you believed the gospel, verse 12, you got it? Verse 12. That we who first trusted in Christ, we should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. So what was the word of truth they heard? The gospel, the gospel that Christ died for your sins. You, you didn't die on the cross, did you? Uh, no, so you don't qualify. Did you? Uh, the saints die on the cross. Did Mary die on the cross? No. Jesus Christ is the Savior. He is the one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. In him you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. What does it say there? Verse 14. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession of the praise of his glory? Oh, so we're guaranteed to get our inheritance. So what could we possibly be losing that he was talking about? Because he knows some other things that wasn't covered, but he did talk about it with the Colossians. So let's go two books down. The Colossians chapter 3. And he makes this comment. Picking it up in verse, verse 23 of the third chapter of Colossians, Colossians 3, 23. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. That's a proper mindset. You look at life through the Lord's eyes all the time. Lord, what would you have me to do? And some of the things we do very are very pleasing to men. But that's beside the point for the Christian walk. He wants us to think this way all the time. Whatsoever you do, Nothing is eliminated. Do it hardly as to the Lord and not unto men. For this reason, look at verse 24. And this explains what he was talking about in Ephesians chapter 5. He's talking about 
losing the reward of the inheritance, which is something different. A gift is something you don't work for. A reward is something you work for. There is, if we are willing to apply the truth of inheritance and live in the light of pleasing God in whatsoever we do, God will reward us. We looked at that, at that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. We looked at that principle of, of the judgment seat of Christ, where we will be judged according to our works. They have to be matching the inheritance. We're living in the light of what we inherit. And we inherit all spiritual blessings in the heaven, heavens in Christ Jesus. We will reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a fantastic future, all because we believe the gospel. But he's now giving him encouragement, though, as children, walk in love now. Walk as children of light. So he said, you will receive the reward of the inheritance. So that's different than what he's speaking of in Ephesians chapter 1. He's talking about the reward of the inheritance. That's what he's talking about indirectly. So the, uh, the, the people that do these evil things, they don't get it. Their inheritance. So you, we don't lose our inheritance. But he's saying he's talking about the unbeliever. They don't have an inheritance. But I want you to know that the, there's a, uh, a different emphasis on the word inheritance. They understood this. They have been taught this. You know it perfectly. And he, so he doesn't take time to go through the details. But I'm just sharing you some other portions of scripture that helps to clarify it. Let's go back to our sheet. So you need to know the principle of inheritance. Number six, let no one deceive you so this is a present imperative act of your choice. So he makes it wearable, that, uh, you aware the working of the spirit to be uh, doing whatsoever you do, do it hardly as to the Lord, not unto men. So you evaluate words that, and when people are asking you to do things, you look for things that line up with your inheritance. Not empty words, as he mentions here. And he said, the things that are, be, are being encouraged to be done in the world are receiving presently the wrath of God. For he says, for because of these things, the wrath presently of God, it comes upon the sons of disobedience. God has to Do certain things in the present situations of life in judging individuals that have, are violating uh, with empty words that are creating a lot of problems. I don't know how he does it, way, you know, which way he does it, but that's what the verse says. Therefore, do not be, that means you could be, partakers with them. So what, what's important to you is don't join them in how they operate. Our knowledge of God causes us to know his high standard. So we're focusing on him automatically as, as I'm allowing the spirit of God to work in me, I'm adjusted. 
Verse eight, for you were once darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk, present imperative active, you must presently walk as children of light. For the fruit of the spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Number 10, finding out present participle, that means ongoing activity. So that's the ing at find and the difference between find and finding. So we were finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And we'll be talking about verses 8 through 10 today on the other side. So let's go to the other side. The present continued walk as a child, children of light, causes us to enjoy the present continue of finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. So this is important for us to realize that we can know and do his will. So letter D, okay, if you're flipped over down on the other side, now we're going to examine verses 8 through 10. Letter D, find out what is acceptable to the Lord. That's the must. We need to do that. And these verses, all this whole portion is pointing toward this achievement. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 through 10. Let's review it. For you were once darkness. That's referring to your unsaved condition. But now you are light in the Lord. You are positionally in a new condition. So we hear he's pointing to positional light. It's how God looks at me. Because I'm in Christ. Not my actual. Otherwise, uh, we'd have to be perfect all the time to have be considered sons of light. And that's why people think they can lose their salvation. They read these verses and it seems, well, I'm, I, I'm, that's impossible for me to do. And that's true. But we are to, as a believer, walk in the light of this position as much as we can. And that's called maturing, when we do it more consistently. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So we might be familiar with Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, the listing of the fruit of the Spirit. It's a little different uh, context. That's still true. But you have to study the book of Galatians to find out what that is. I'm not going on that private trail to explain that to you. I want to explain what's here in front of you. What he's trying to do with this uh, word, fruit here, is it's a result of the spirit. Okay? The result or the fruit, the product of the spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. It is explaining what the light is. The divine light that you're walking in as children of, as in practice is these three things. Goodness, righteousness, and truth. Point number one. You were once darkness. As I said before, this refers to their unsaved condition. The emphasis, 
this emphasizes their previous inability to see what God's talking about. They could see physically, and they could understand what other things are going on in the world, but they weren't understanding God. And so this is talking about spiritual sight. They were darkened. And we've touched on this in Galatians, I mean, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, chapter, chapter 4, verses 2 and 4 through 4. And you can study that on your own. And then John 16, 7 through 11, it, it speaks of this, the helper that was going to come. And he would provide the, uh, a convicting work in humbling us. The sin of, of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And that's so... That's where you'd stick those verses. But let's just read this again. This emphasized the previous inability to see. The Holy Spirit illuminates their humbled minds before the glorious gospel. So before they didn't see the gospel, but at that moment of time, because they humble themselves to say, okay, I can't do it. I can't work my way to heaven. I see that. All my righteousness are as filthy rags. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I see these verses. I, this fellow is telling me these verses, and I, I believe those verses. And says, okay, then who is the only Savior you can go to to help you? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. So the object my, of my faith is not myself or my ability to believe. I'm looking away from myself and, and just in believing in the object, Jesus Christ. He died for my sins. He was buried and he rose again. And I do that. In that moment of time, I become a child of God. I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly in Christ. Instantly. Now, God says, I want you to use your potential to change your thinking, to change your speech, to conform it to my will, and ultimately to do things that are pleasing to God and accomplishing his will in my life. Now, you can only prove the will of God at one moment at a time. You can't do it. It's, you can't do installments. Yeah, you know, that's why I, I I don't agree with dedication services. Why? What are you saying in a dedication? Well, I'm promising I'm going to be good for it. You know, you can't live one, more than one moment at a time. So if I'm focusing on this moment and the next moment and the next moment, I'm getting it done. And that's the only way it can get accomplished. Number two, now are you light in the Lord? Isn't that beautiful? He's not saying, you know, possibly you're light in the Lord. It's affirmative. It's true. Now are you light in the Lord? Our position in the Lord gives us access to a particular kind of light. Believers are the only ones who can take advantage of this light. You have to be a believer to have this light. It's given to you in your salvation package. It's a wonderful thing. So, number three, walk. This ability then is made available to you to walk. You must now, imperative, you must, as children, born ones of light. At the moment of the, the regeneration of our human spirit, we're given the ability to walk as born ones of light. And that's provided by God to see what's going on spiritually. 
Point number four. The light is described as giving us three important qualities of the spirit. For the fruit of the spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Paul is describing the light of the Holy Spirit illuminating the mind using three characteristics. This is something that God is doing for you. As you heal yourself, no reckon heal, where you're trusting that you died together with Christ, you were buried together with Christ, you're resurrected together with Christ to walk in newness of life. Romans chapter 6. So God says, I want you to join me. But you need a different value system, and the light provides you the three mo most important aspects of illumination. It has to be good. Virtuous, beneficial. We should be able to label the benefit according to God's standard in everything I do. I should be able to see that's a, it's a good thing to do. If it's not a good thing, why am I doing it? Good. Agathosune, virtuous or beneficial from God's perspective. In working together, this is important. We've looked at this word previously in this book of Ephesians. That's emphasizing that th this, this importance of goodness in our interaction. Number, B, uh, uh, number two, B, righteousness. This would be God's quality of right that is to be used for God's purpose. And you'll see that in Romans 6. There's Romans 6, 13. We have time to run there. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Okay, I, I'm since I'm here, if you go to verse uh, six. From chapter, verse, chapter 6, verse 3. Let's go back to verse 3. Or do you not know? It's a form of a question here. And he's, I think he's trying to point out that they do know this thing, but they're not focused on it. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized, what kind of baptism is that? Baptism of the Holy Spirit. What happened with the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What were we placed into? The body of Christ. So we, where were we before? In Adam. So we are moved from being in Adam to being in Christ. He talks about that in the fifth chapter, Romans, that we were, wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men for all of sin. He was our federal head before. But our being placed by the Holy Spirit in Christ, we were placed into his death. We were baptized into his death, so we died together with Christ. Therefore, we were buried with him through the baptism into death, 
that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. So this is what we, the truths we need to focus on for us to walk differently in our, in our next moment. I keep on remembering that God has a plan for me to walk in a new way. And so I'm open to that. So I, well, the first question I ask me, myself is, with what light I have from the word of God, by the spirit of God, is it good? Is it right? So jump down to verse 13. Well, verse 9. Knowing that, that God, having been raised from the dead, dieth no more, death no longer hath dominion over him. So we're claiming his death. For the death that he died, he died to the sin, referring to the sin nature. It's in the singular. In the, in the Greek, there's a the before it, the sin. Once for all, but that the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also, and we see the word, word reckon. And reckon means to logically assess something. It's uh, that word logizomai, we get our word logic in English from it. It's logical. Likewise, reckon, make it logical yourselves to be dead indeed in the sin. It's the only logical way that you're free to walk with God and be what he would have you to be. Otherwise, you would have to try to do it in your own energy and the Jews proved that in the Old Testament that that failed, right? Doesn't work. It, the, it, we would have to be bringing animal sacrifices here this morning. I mean, anyone bring a goat? <laughs> We'd be all into livestock. <laughs> We'd have to have a different kind of place to be dead. <laughs> Verse 12, therefore do not let the sin reign in your mortal bodily body that you should obey it in its lust. So help me, what, why, what helps you to overcome the sin nature is that you know you're focusing mentally in this moment that you died together with Christ, you were buried together with Christ, and so, therefore, the power of the sin nature to dominate you was, is being held back because you're, by faith, you're believing God's promise to you. And your faith is counted for righteousness. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But with faith, you can please God. It may sound a little complicated, but it's really quite simple. Are you believing God? Every verse you're confronted with here in the that's for the church, you're going to say, do I believe that? And I'm here to help you in that process. That's my, what, my contribution to, the, to our little body of believers. Verse 13, and do not present your members. So realize you're doing one or the other here. Mentally, you are either no reckoning, reckoning and yielding, counting it a fact logically that you died together with Christ, you were buried together with Christ, and you're risen with Christ to walk in newness of life. So what new thing do you want me to do today? I, I need new quality. And so that's my prayer. I want to do your will, Father. Not my will, but thine be done, just like the Lord Jesus Christ did, said. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to the sin nature, but present yourself to God. So mentally, you're presenting yourself to God as being alive from the dead. And your members, your body parts, as 
weapons of righteousness. That, that word in, instruments is someplace, some places translated weapons or armor. Very interesting word. It's meant to speak of also protection. It's not instruments to eat with. <laughs> it's instruments of protection. And uh, I'll have a study, I'm sure, sometime just going over the usage of that word. I think it'd be worthwhile to know the places that you find it. Okay, back to our notes. So, if you look over on the left hand column, let's look at the first verse that we can add to our arsenal of directions. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Prophetically, things are moving along at a very rapid pace. And as we look at the newspaper, we're, thinking, we're, we're reading things that uh, kind of indicate in the last days. And we need to have especially a mind that's focused accurately, where we are, really we are calmly considering the will of God and God's purposing. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Any moment, we might be caught away. So how do we operate? Notice the last part of the verse. Therefore, in the result of that truth, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. That's what you, when you when you're walking as children of light, that's what you're doing. And let us put on, and here's that word instruments. No, that's the, oh, it's not instrument. That is, what is it? Armor. Same word, same Greek word. Armor of light. The next verse, two verses here. Romans chapter 12, verses one and two. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable. And uh, that's the, a Greek word which means fully agreeable. God's standard has to be met. We're incapable of meeting it, but by faith in a work of another, he's providing our, our Christian life. We go right back to the cross and we, we reckon ourselves to be dead with Christ, buried with Christ, resurrected with Christ. We walk in newness of life. Okay, Lord, what good thing do you have me to do today? What right thing do you have me to do today? Then that makes me acceptable to God, which is your reasonable. And that's the word rational as well. It's your logical service, same as reckon, same word. And do not be conformed to this world, which is at this time in which we live, it's the word aeon, age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove
Dokidzomai. Test for the purpose of approval. What is that good, agathos, beneficial, and acceptable, eucharisto, fully agreeable, and perfect, teleos, complete will of God. He's talking about the same thing from a different angle as he was ta talking to in Romans 12. He's talking about the same thing here, but from a different angle, he's providing truths that would line up. He talks about sacrifice, but it's a, a, little, a little different context. So the last thing we have our three ingredients is truth. The spirit of truth uses the revealed word of truth our scriptures. We need to spend time in the word of God. The importance of the local assembly having someone that's teaching the word of God accurately. What does God say is important. Uh, I might not be impressive in any other way, maybe. But uh, what I want you to know that my heart's desire is to present to you what God said. That your heart might be encouraged to look to him and me. Three main ingredients, goodness, righteousness, and truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, Jesus said. Chapter number five. Uh, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. This is the result. Finding out. No kids am I. To test for the purpose of approval is a present tense participle. So that's talking about a continual action. This is a part of your everyday function. You're finding out, you're testing out in each situation. What would you have me to do, Father? And he might not care what, you know, if it's a blue one or a green one. You know, there's, we have, there's, there's decisions like that. So whatever you want. But there's some things that are obviously, you, you, a verse comes to mind. And that says, well, that's really lining up with the will of God. I think that's a good thing for me to go. Well, let's see how this works. <coughs> Active voice. They must do the action. This explains what can be accomplished if they will make these choices. You'll be finding out. If you've done the previous verses, you're going to be in the in a condition of finding out what is the acceptable will of God? Fully agreeable. Acceptable to the Lord. The mental process that the Apostle Paul had led them through revealed what is fully agreeable. Okay. You've had enough, I can tell Sean's the Ani, so. <laughs> More coffee. Just teasing. So thank you uh, for putting up with me and going through that. But I want you to know that God wants you to know but you have, it, knowing about it is not enough. That's what I said. Yeah, you have knowledge of this, but you, how, how are you applying it? And keeping it simple. That you died together with Christ. You were buried together with Christ. You were resurrected. In the mind of God, look at it from his point of view. He says, I, what more do you ex expect of me? I, I put you at the highest level that a human being could possibly be. 
in my government. You're going to reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. What more do you want? I've blessed you with all spiritual blessings. Not some. I mean, 50% would be really good, wouldn't it? But he says, oh, 100%. And he has plans for us for an eternity together with him. But we can have this fellowship with him, this sharing in common with him as we come and pursue being acceptable to the Lord. This is a worthy venture of your mind, a path worth going down. It has eternal results. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and the throne of grace that we come to knowing that without your grace, undeserved favor that you provided through the the person, the Lord Jesus Christ, we would have no hope. But we have a glorious expectation looking for that blessed hope, that happy hope, and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for providing eternal life as a gift. Thank you, Father, for this just this, the, the, the beauty of salvation and the beauty not only of becoming a child of God, but walking as children of light. We can use this illumination to help make decisions every day. Thank you again for each one that is listening to these messages that, is, that are Chewing them, encourage them, Father, draw them to yourself, and that we might be pleasing to you today, in this moment, in Jesus' name, amen.